This is Psych Boost helping you with your psychology qualification one video at a time. This video is on social influence and in this 12th GCSE video we're going to be covering pro-social behaviour. The very kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. A very big thank you for all of your help guys. To join them follow the link. For everyone you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. So as usual, here are the terms on the AQA GCSE specification we're going to cover in this video. As we go through the video, they're going to be in red text. You're going to need to be able to respond to questions on all of this. If you're not doing the GCSE, well, stick with us. It could be fun. Psychologists are interested in the actions people do or don't take when they witness an emergency situation. This is called bystander behavior. In what you'll notice is a bit of a pattern in these social influence videos, we're going to consider social and dispositional factors surrounding bystander behavior. So if we start by considering social factors, we're thinking about aspects of the environment that make it more or less likely that other people will help. The presence of others is a social factor. It's thought the more people who witness an emergency, the less likely anyone is to help. That's a bit counterintuitive, but this is due to the diffusion of responsibility. If there are lots of people not taking action, then each one of those people feels less responsible because nobody else was helping. Another consideration is the cost of helping. Helping is a risk. You might be putting yourself in danger, it costs you your time, and what if the person you're trying to help kind of rejects you? It could be embarrassing. Those are all costs to helping. But not helping also has a cost. You might feel guilty for not helping, uh, you might worry that other people will criticize you for not helping. There are also possible rewards. You might feel happiness after you've helped someone. So you helping or not needs to be a balance between the risks and the rewards that might vary from situation to situation. As a positive evaluation for social factors and pro-social behavior, we can use a study by Pillivan that we're gonna cover in this video. But in a critical evaluation, we can consider there are many real life emergency situations in which some people will be the first to help, even when everybody else stands by, even risking their own lives to help strangers. It's likely there are dispositional differences with the personalities of these people. So of course, dispositional factors, traits or personality factors of individuals that make them more or less likely to help. Firstly, similarity to victim. This one is a little bit depressing, but it's thought the more characteristics you share with someone who needs help, the more likely you are to give them that help. So this can be things like similar age, race, or group membership, like if you support the same sports team. But it's likely because identifying with them increases your empathy towards them. Another trait is an individual's level of expertise. If in an emergency situation you have specialist knowledge that can help, such as medical training, you're more likely to offer help. This is thought to be because you have the training, so you're more confident, and you're more familiar in medical situations. We could criticize the dispositional explanation for bystander behavior by looking at the next bit of research by Pillivan as evidence for aspects of social situation being important on whether we help or we don't. So let's look at Pillivan's study. Pillivan's subway study was a field study investigating bystander behavior. Previous research on bystander behavior had been conducted in the lab, but Pillivan thought that those studies totally lacked validity. Pillivan tested social factors influencing helping behavior, such as appearance on New York City subway. In one of those subway carriages, an actor would pretend to collapse. So in some of those trials, the actor would have a bottle of alcohol and pretended to be drunk. And in other trials, the actor would have a walking stick to suggest that he was disabled. Not all of the other passengers on the carriage were passengers. Some were researchers who observed behavior, measuring how long it took for the people to help the actor. What the researchers found was that when the actor was disabled, they were helped within 70 seconds of collapsing 90% of the time. But when the actor appeared to be drunk, they were only helped within 70 seconds 50% of the time. So the researchers concluded from these results that a person's characteristics, such as appearance, will influence the likelihood of them being helped. So this is seen as evidence of bystanders considering the cost of helping. When evaluating Pillivan's subway study, we can consider the advantages and disadvantages of using a field study method and how that influences the validity of the findings. 
As a field study, we have to consider that Pillivan didn't have control of potential extraneous variables. There could have been uncontrolled differences between the drunk and disabled conditions, such as the individual differences between the passengers on the subway. Maybe more helpful people were on the subway by chance in the disabled condition. However, the advantage of using a field study is the behaviour of the passengers was very likely to be completely natural. The participants were unaware that they were part of an experiment, they were just in their normal environment, and while it's unusual for someone to collapse on the subway, it's a believable thing to happen. So we would say that the task has mundane realism. We can definitely criticise the ethics of Pillivan's study. It's accepted that participants should give their informed consent before taking part in any experiment. But in this study, everyone in the carriage who wasn't a researcher or the actor was a participant. They did not give consent. And as they were all entering and leaving the carriage at different stops, it wasn't possible to debrief any of them and tell them they were part of a psychology study. It may have caused some emotional harm to people who felt guilty for not helping the actor, not knowing they were just in an experiment. We've covered the content, but you know now that you need to be able to use all that information to actually answer questions. Here are five questions I've made to test your skills. So pause the video and give them a go. For those of you who support me on Patreon, I've put together an additional bonus video showing you how to answer these properly. For everyone else, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video on social influence, crowd and collective behavior.